Hey everybody, Pastor Stan again, bringing you another message from the Bible, the Word of God. Today we're going to talk about the parable of the divided kingdom. The parable of the divided kingdom, which has direct relevance for all of us today because we're still living in the divided kingdom. We're talking about a divided spiritual kingdom. So let's take a look at it. Today our scripture is going to be Mark 3 and Matthew 12. Mark 3 and Matthew 12. Hear the word of the Lord. One time Jesus entered a house, and the crowds began to gather again. Soon he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. When his family heard what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed, and they asked, Could it be that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah? But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, Wow, pff, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Now Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, Any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cast out demons too, so they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. I tell you the truth, all sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is a sin with eternal consequences. He told them this because they were saying, he's possessed by an evil spirit. Then Jesus said, anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. My friends, the age-old battle between good and evil, between God and Satan, is still being carried out in the world in which we live today. A question that I've received about this many times is, how come we never hear about how to have victory over the fallen angels at my church? How come the preacher never talks about it in my church or Bible study? Well, first of all, Satan has craftily convinced and deceived those involved in theological higher education that he doesn't exist. <laughs> Let me say that again. Let me say that again. This is why you never hear about it. Well, first of all, so here it is. Satan has craftily convinced and deceived those involved in theological higher education that he doesn't exist. He's convinced them that he doesn't exist. So, of course, why would we, why would we preach or teach on it if he doesn't exist? Well, that's a deception because obviously the Bible teaches he does, he definitely exists, and that his end is going to be a hot one. Therefore, those who do believe in the Bible and the existence of fallen angels, which are actually demons, same word are thought to be a part of lower Christianity, who believe in myths and fables. Probably, if pressed, uh, the elite at uh, theological schools uh, think that uh, Bible believers on, are on the, have not evolved to, their, to the other level of those who don't believe it anymore. That they're, they're up here and we're down here. Yes, well, let's, let's, we'll wait and see how that works out for them. Well, this is never clearer, my friends, then check this out. Does this ever happen where you're at? Pastors spend more time, sermon time, that is, talking about their time at the beach, their vacation at the beach, or telling cute, 
puppy stories, etc. Anything other than teaching the truth of the Bible. They spend more time talking about those kind of things than the truth of the Bible. Why? Well, most notably, they don't believe it has any power. They don't believe. They're not a Bible believer. So why would they teach something they don't believe in? Evidently, they believe in going on vacation. Yes, then Satan convinces pastors that the biblical stories of God's miracles are not real at all. Ah, that stuff about Jesus walking on the water, that stuff about him raising the dead, healing people. Now, you know, you can't believe in that. That's, that was 2,000 years ago, and that's not relevant for today. Everybody knows that that can't happen today. So, obviously, not believing the Bible. Just writing the whole thing off. Satan has convinced them that those things didn't happen. Or if they did happen, they happened way back then, and they don't happen today. Hey, here's a, here's a good one. Satan must have really laughed. I can imagine he might really laugh. He really laughed at the gullibility of pastors teaching that God did not create humankind, but instead we evolved from monkeys. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine how gullible Satan thinks certain pastors are to believe that God did not create everything, although that's exactly what the Bible says, pretty much from the beginning to the end of the Bible. God created everything that exists, but instead, no, God didn't do that. Uh, we evolved from monkeys. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but <laughs> that's the uh, people who believe that and will teach that, right? They will teach that. It makes me wonder how, how, you know, what their definition of pastor is. Also, that uh, Jesus didn't do the miracles because humans can't do miracles. That's part of that argument. I mean, obviously, that stuff doesn't happen today because it never happened. I mean, people just can't go around doing miracles. Well, of course, not, uh, not without the power of God being with them, within them, which is what the Bible teaches happens when I accept Jesus as Savior. So here's what happens when people reject the truth about Jesus. They reject the truth about Jesus, the reject, the rejected truth of the Bible, then opens the door to believe every single lie possible. Once I, once I reject the truth, then I will believe any any kind of lie after that, which is certainly uh, the case. People believe all kinds of crazy stuff out there, and and actually believe it because they've rejected the one truth that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah come to earth to die for the sins of the world. All who accept him will be forgiven and will one day when we die go to paradise and then eventually return with Jesus to be resurrected to receive the new body like Jesus has, which will live forever. That's what the Bible teaches. And I like that teaching. That sounds very good to me. So here's an example. Here's an example, which if you've been around at all, uh, or even if you haven't, you, you could easily notice this, easily notice this. Visit uh, a, a, a church building congregation, and you'll see people doing this. So here's the thing. Once people reject the truth about Jesus, they will believe any number of lies. And here's an example of that. All over the world, all over the world at the same time, Box store organized religion, that means a, a group that has a building with a name over the door that is uh, supposed to be set aside specifically for worship, or their church building, some people call it, and shortened to just church. Are you going to church? Which church do you attend or belong to? Well, in all of these, all of them, I don't know a single one that does not fit this category which is partially because buildings were never commanded to be built in the New Testament. But we built them anyway because people got a bit of a power complex and they can't get away from that Tower of Babel type of thinking. Tradition is given more weight than what the scriptures say. Every, every single time, every building church I've been in, it's been the same. We have our traditions here and they... They are more important than what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? 
Bible says, love your neighbors yourself. Be kind to every person. But if I violate one of those traditions, I will find people in that congregation, turn on me, and uh, become very mean to me and tell me that I don't have a place there anymore. Now, this is supposed to be the Church of Jesus Christ, but who's really in charge of that church? So what, what it ends up happening in no time is the building becomes their God. The building becomes their God, and the budget is set up to maintain the building, and uh, we don't care about the homeless people or the people in need out there, the hungry and, and others like that. Yes, so here's the other side of that. That's where uh, the persecution comes from. <laughs> this is, sounds crazy. Persecution comes from those very same people, the tradition-bound people in building churches, against those who believe the Bible is true. Because people who are sinning hate to have it brought up before them that they're sinning. People who are doing wrong do not like to hear they're doing wrong. And they will do more wrong to get rid of me or get rid of you because we're pointing out what they're doing is wrong. Can't, can't take it. So what happens is, is you got uh, your peer pressure, you got public shaming and shunning against the people who believe the Bible. Don't, we don't talk about that at our church. We don't talk about you know, Jesus and what he said we're supposed to do. We, we've got it under control. We're in, we're in control of our church. Well, we'll see how that works out for them. Even Jesus' family should have known better. Even they should have known better. But look what happened to him. He suffered, Jesus suffered persecution from his own family. Oh my goodness. It's true. Look at it. Mark 3 uh, and verse 20 and following. One time Jesus entered a house and the crowds began to gather again. Soon he and his disciples couldn't even find time to eat. When his family heard about what was happening, they tried to take him away. He's out of his mind, they said. Jesus' family comes up, try to capture him, take him home because he's lost his mind. All right, so, and there, believe me, there's going to be many in our families who have thought that we have lost our mind. Only, only big sin in their mind is uh, that we believe the Bible's true. That's it. Oh, one of those Jesus people, one of those Jesus freaks. Oh, yeah, uh, let's have Stan pray. He's the religious one, right? All types of persecution from our families because we believe the Bible is true. Now, here's the thing. Some people are not going to be satisfied with just attempting to discredit us by saying we're out of our minds, though. Some will go as far as to say that we're demon-possessed. Oh, yes. That the power within us, the power of God, is actually the power of Satan. Some people will, in fact, do that. Yeah, they'll go as far as to say that we're the ones who are demon-possessed. Well, guess what? This also happened to Jesus. So if it happened to him, it's going to happen to us. Matthew 12, 24. But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Well, in response to the Pharisees, telling Jesus he's the one who is demon-possessed, he tells the parable of the divided kingdom. Jesus says, Matthew 12, 25 and following. Uh, Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, Any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town or family splintered by feuding will soon fall apart. And if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. His own kingdom will not survive. So Satan, by the way, is the autocratic fallen angel down here to earth, king of the world, king of the earth, and his time is running out. God allows him to run around causing havoc, but one day his time is going to be up and he knows it. And Satan, he enforces his will on those beneath him with violence, all of his little demonettes and um, the people who serve him out there. He, he enforces his will through violence. And the fallen angels and the demons, they got to do what he says. Well, they're the same thing, actually. Demons are fallen angels. Although Satan led the rebellion that got himself and a third of the angels kicked out of heaven and exiled to the earth. There is no rebellion against his troops. This war between the angels of God and Satan and his angels continues to this very day. As the Lord, thanks be to God, protect us from the evil one 
and wicked people. The parable of the divided kingdom ends with an ominous note for those who deny the truth of the Bible and for those who would even say that the followers of Jesus are demon-possessed. Jesus says in verse 28, I tell you the truth, all sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, but anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. This is a sin with eternal consequences. He told them this because they were saying he's possessed by an evil spirit. Then Jesus said, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. But for the followers of Jesus, for all those who have committed their life to him, to follow him, his word to us is this, Mark 16, 17 and following. And I hold these, these words close to my heart. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. Jesus says, and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to t handle snakes, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. Yes, they'll be able to speak in new languages. <laughs> Amazing. And they will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. These are the signs, Jesus says, of the believer. The believer, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. So all of this is it's normal, it's, it's more normal for us because it's what the Bible says. We believe it even if we may or may not see it. But it's, Jesus says it's true. But all of those out there in organized religion and in the world, the rest of the world, I should say, they down, they down those who believe what the Bible says. No, no, that can't happen today. And they try to steal our faith and steal our joy. My friends, the Bible's been given to us by God so that we will know how much God loves us, what he has done for us, what he has planned for us, and the power he has given us over the enemy Satan and his fallen angels. Jesus said, they will cast out demons in my name. And in Luke 10, 19 following, Jesus says, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy over all the power of the enemy, and you could walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Praise be to God for that. So I have a greater joy, my friends. I have a greater joy than knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and has given me power over the enemy in his name. I have the great joy of knowing that my name is registered in heaven so that when I leave this life, I will have a place waiting for me called paradise. The Lord Jesus says in John 6, 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Well, what do we learn today, preacher, about the divided kingdom, parable of the divided kingdom? Well, here's some things that I've learned. Number one, Satan has deceived organized religion into believing he doesn't exist. And that's why you never hear about Satan and the fallen angels and how to have authority and power over them in uh, your just your regular box door building church and denomination. Satan has deceived organized religion into believing he doesn't exist. That's how gullible people are, or how they want to be deceived so they can do whatever they want. Number two, I will be persecuted by family and society for believing the Bible is true. It's, it's straight up fact. It is the truth. I will be persecuted by family and society for believing the Bible is true. It's truly remarkable. And number three, the good news. Jesus has given me authority in his name over all the power of Satan and his falling angels. He's given me all authority in his name over all the power of Satan and his fallen angels. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thank you for sending Jesus from heaven to die on the cross for my sins. Help me embrace the authority you've given me over Satan and his fallen angels. Help me be filled with your peace as I take my stand for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God be with you, my friends. As always, like and subscribe. If you know somebody who's really struggling with this type of issue right now and doesn't understand why their family's rejecting them they, or something like that, or they're having problems in their, in their local uh, box store church, send them a link to this message. Help, let's get the word out and help people understand the type of battle that we're facing and that there is a cost to pay for believing the Bible, but the reward is eternal life. All right, see you next time on the Pastor Stan YouTube channel. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.